Hello and welcome to the Lazy Brook Farm. I've got a perfect project for you today. I've had some traction issues with my tractor and I've got the perfect solution to fix that. I decided to fill them with some liquid ballast. I've looked at calcium chloride, I've looked at rim guard, I've looked at uh, foam in the tires and also uh, windshield washer fluid and antifreeze and I've settled on the antifreeze. I think it'll give me uh, a pretty good cold protection and I think it'll work out really well. So I've had a few times both in the snow and in the dirt where I just feel like if I had a little bit of extra weight I would be able to push right through this problem and wouldn't get all the slippage that I'm getting. First thing you want to do is jack up the tractor. You do want to be able to freely spin the wheel as you're doing the process. Then remove the core of the valve stem and make sure to keep it in a safe space so you don't lose it. The list of tools you'll need is pretty simple. You'll need an air liquid adapter, a few feet of hose, and some form of pump. Uh, you can use something like this drill pump, but so far I've had some pretty bad luck with it. You have to manually prime it, and it had a tendency to lose its prime pretty often with the pressure from the tire. Also, even though this was sized for a garden hose, it really didn't fit very well and you could just pull the fitting right off. Now it's time to get to work. Start by threading on the adapter for the appropriate size of your valve stem body, then connect the adapter to your garden hose. After playing around with that drill pump for a little while, I ended up moving over to a sump pump. It did work a lot better than the drill pump, but it did require a little bit more fluid because you did have to have it around the pump. You do want to keep the pump submerged in liquid because it does help to keep the motor cool. One of the main reasons why I chose this antifreeze is it's actually potable. It's designed to winterize the water lines in an RV and it has a freezing point down to negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. About every gallon or two, you do want to bleed off any pressure that is built up, as too much pressure could force the tire off the rim. As you can see here, I went a little bit too long, and just the pressure on the tire forced all this air out past the pump. I did find it was a little quicker just to disconnect the hose to bleed off any excess pressure. gauge how far you've gotten, all you have to do is rotate the tire and where the liquid comes out is how full it's gotten. Here is where I ran out. I really thought I had enough, but uh, apparently I'm short by about two gallons. So I thought I had three extra just in case, but apparently I needed five extra. So off tractor supply to get a few more gallons. I just got back with another whole case. I figured why not, I can return whatever I don't use, but I'd hate to have to go pack again and get more. Um, I think I'll probably only need two, maybe three more gallons, but we'll see. When you get close to the end, make sure you stop and bleed off pressure often. Otherwise, it gets kind of messy. Looks like it was just a hair over two more gallons. Maybe two and a half. One thing you do want to keep in mind from now on, you do need to make sure when you fill or bleed off some air, you want the little uh, valve at the top, 12 o'clock position of the tire, uh, because otherwise, you know, your, your level of fluid is somewhere around here and you'll get fluid out when you uh, go to fill. Uh, I'm going to do something you definitely shouldn't do, is I'm going to rotate the tire so it's below the level and show you what happens. So mine has a built-in valve, measures pressure, so right now a little bit of fluid came back in. And as you can see, it's already starting to uh, Does that too, and <laughs> yeah, you, you really, <laughs> you really should make sure it's at the 
12 o'clock position because it can actually, if it's you know, left like that, it can damage the seals in your pressure gauge. So, don't do that. If you enjoyed the video and you don't want to miss out on anything in the future, please subscribe. And if you got anything that you'd like to see, please comment below. Thank you and have a fantastic day.